Testing really quick, Kathy. Can you see the slide? I just put it up. All right now, we're good. Hello everyone and welcome. This is Chapman with Online Trader Central. We are pleased today to be able to bring you from the stockswish.com. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter from the stockswish.com. Please welcome. Good afternoon everyone and welcome. Thank you so much Kevin and Kathy with Online Trader Central. Welcome. It's a gorgeous day here in New York City and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Thank you for coming. My name is Melissa Arma and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh LLC. And today's topic is called The Millionaire Map. And I'm going to go into detail about this. I, I always talk seriously about money whenever I talk about money, but I'm going to talk really serious in the lecture today because we're going to talk about a lot of money. And the larger the amount of money, the more serious I seem to talk. So <laughs> this will be a very interesting lecture for sure. If you'd like more information, you can go to my website at www.thestockswoosh.com or feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com if you like more information. And you can go to my YouTube site and uh, click on here and uh, become a member of my YouTube. Then you'll always get a link whenever I have a video, upload a video. I did do two market videos today. You can go there and watch those after the webinar. So let's get started. I always like to start with a quote when I'm lecturing, and I think this is a really good one here. Start by doing what's necessary, then do what's possible. And suddenly you are doing the impossible. And this is a quote from Francis Assisi. And it's a good one because a lot of people want to jump the gun. They want to go here first. But you've got to start what's doing what's necessary. Then you do what's possible, and then you're doing what's the impossible. But actually, I don't think anything is impossible in this world. I think that anything is possible that you want to make happen. And the idea of making a million dollars as one individual in the world is possible, even though it may seem impossible to a lot of people because of the fact that they might be trading the market on and off for years and not making the money they want to. The idea of making a million dollars seems impossible to some people, but it's actually very possible. And it's even possible as one person. And I, I always, when I started trading, I started trading at the end of 2008. I got into this business because I wanted to make millions of dollars. I didn't get into it because I wanted to just make XYZ amount. I had a good career doing mortgages, and then the mortgage industry kind of took a tumble in 2007, 2008, and I wanted to find a new career. But I always wanted to make millions of dollars trading. And actually, thinking back, I uh, recently talked to an old friend. I always wanted to make millions of dollars even when I was doing mortgages. I was always, I was doing mortgages, and I was always trying to get more loans and trying to find bigger loans, and I was always trying to find ways to do that. And who knows, you know, maybe I would have stayed in that industry, I would have gotten to that point. Things ended up changing on the side with the banking industry, but it was always my dream actually to become a millionaire. So I'm in the right business now because I'm in finance directly related to the stock market. And if there's any industry out there where it's possible for you to make tons of money and millions of dollars, it is in the finance industry and particularly in the stock market because there's billions of dollars that run through the market every day. So how can you earn millions in the market? 
I recently just sat down to make this for myself, which I titled The Millionaire Map. And I did this because I had a really nice play within the last month that for the first time I really seriously sat down to work on this for myself about how to make a million dollars a year day trading. And it's something, like I said, I've thought about for years. And I've been doing well for a while. Uh, but after I had a trade, which we're going to talk about in this lecture a couple weeks ago, I realized that I, I, like I could do this this year for real. And I realized that it didn't take as much money as I thought. And I realized that I didn't need as much money as I thought I was going to and or as much buying power. So I actually wrote this lecture for myself. And one of the reasons that my class, which I'll talk about at the end of the lecture, is which I teach a class on what I do. Well, one of the reasons my class is really good is because I made the class for myself. I didn't actually make that class to teach anyone, the class I teach now. The Golden Gap course is just my own information that I created for myself to trade the market. And then I just made it a class. And this lecture today, I created when I went through and went through the trades. I did it for myself. And then I plopped it into a PowerPoint, and now I'm going to talk about it today. But I think the best people that teach in this industry are people that trade, that do it for themselves. And everything I do, I do for myself to get myself better. And that's one of the reasons I'm a good mentor and a good teacher. And that's why the information I teach is so advanced and so good, okay? So today, we're going to go through what I sat down and looked at for myself after I had this day that there was this one trade when I realized that, you know, that this is something that can happen for myself like now, like this year. And for, for a lot of you that are trading with me and for those of you that want to trade with me, it's something that is actually 100% possible. Now, let me just see if we have any questions. Okay. The audio is in and out. Can everybody hear me? All right, looks like only one person's having an issue. Kathy, if you can help them. All right, so let's get started. There was an article. I read this article. This was, this was just all in the last two weeks. I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to tell you where it's from, because I did cite it. The key finding in this study, there's a study, this is a millionaire article, is that the millionaire wannabes have six wealth-building factors on their side, factors that were shared by people who had already reached and surpassed the million-dollar dream level. The, these six wealth building factors are time horizon. Now listen, this is very important. If you're here, this is a good lecture. This is going to be a good lecture, people. So the six wealth building factors are time horizon to becoming a millionaire. Career, all right, your current career. Income, self-made status, long-term focus, and investing style. My initial reaction when I saw those factors was that plenty of people with big dollar dreams are at a disadvantage of making it happen because they picked or settled in a career that doesn't pay exceptionally. This is Listen to this. Or they put off saving and investing for themselves in order to fund the kids' college educations. Now, I happen to be at a great place in my life. I'm single, and I don't have any children, and I have no husband. So I didn't have to fund college educations and things like this. But this is an important article, and I don't know how many in, in, people in here actually have children, okay? Obviously, if you have children, you have more expenses than someone that is single. If you are single, though, okay, you don't have this expense. Now, I'm going to go through these six factors, okay? Number one, time horizon. Emerging affluent investors, which would categorize anyone that is up and coming, meaning they're doing really well, definitely making over six figures a year, and have the potential to become a millionaire. That's how I'm categorizing this. Which is what? Average 40-year-olds and ha who have 27 years left before reaching the normal retirement age. This is from this article. So that would put people meaning between 40 and 67, or wherever you're at now, if you're at age 20, 25, 30, up to about 67, they're saying, or which 65 is normal retirement. If you're older than that and haven't reached the level of affluent, then the clock is working against you. Now, I still think it's possible, but we're going to talk about this more later. The second thing was career. Given their age, the emerging affluent, okay, this continues to go in this article, this emerging affluent person, still have time to climb the corporate ladder, and if they are in the right professions, for example, information technology, finance, and accounting, that climb can make them rich, meaning that people who are in really good jobs can continue to get raises, continue to get promoted within the corporate ladder. It's not that people outside those businesses are stuck, but the idea here is pretty simple. If the people at the top ends of your business are not millionaires, it's a sign that will be tough for you to do better. 
So what does that mean? That means if you're in a profession, this is career. This is the second thing, the career. If you're in a career right now and that you think of the top level at your type of work environment, or whatever you do, I don't know, somebody telling what they do. Think of something that there's a top person in your type, your chosen career. If they aren't a millionaire, what the possibility of you becoming a millionaire in that chosen career really isn't realistic. This is what this point is trying to make. You understand? Now, I'm a trader, okay? Now, think about this. Some of you in here might be full-time traders. Some of you might not. I'm a full-time trader. Are there full-time traders that make millions of dollars? Yes. So do you see, okay? If you choose to be a trader, the top people in this field are millionaires, okay? In fact, the top people in this field are billionaires. Now, let's look at the next one here, income. The emerging affluent have a household income of $125,000 a year, roughly, and two and a half times the medium U.S. household. I'm using this as an average, meaning if you're starting where you make over six figures a year, you could make this reach faster, okay? So the millionaires have an income of $200,000 annually for those who are still employed. Obviously, someone whose salary is closer to the national media has a lot more work to do if reaching seven figures and crossing millionaire territory is their goal. Meaning if you right now have a career, uh, a job, a full-time job, where you're making 40000 a year, you've got more work to do than someone who's making $125,000 a year, and so on and so forth. Again, it's still possible. But you have to think about the career that you're in and the top people in that field, are they even making millions of dollars? Because if not, then this is where you have to talk about changing careers or finding something else to do like trading the market to, to make that money. The next one was self-made status. The class of emerging affluent has work to make themselves richer rather than relying on inheritances and the generosity of their families. Roughly 80% of the emerging affluent have earned or increased their assets on their own. We're going to talk about this in a little bit here. This one right here, the self-made status. Next is long-term focus. Seemingly every study ever done of wealthy Americans says that they are focused on the long-term and making their money grow over time. Something else to think about here. Investing style. The emerging affluent invests aggressively, which means taking on riskier investments with the promise of bigger long-term payoffs. And they tend to be hands-on investors, a.k.a. an active trader, making their own decisions, okay, which is what I do. If it takes money to make money for most people, that means putting at least some of their money into strategies focused on payoffs sufficient enough to reach their long-term goals. And this is where I got the article if you want to read the entire thing, okay? Now, let's talk about self-made status. This right here is one of the key ingredients in that six where it takes the things that you need to evaluate to getting to the millionaire status to actually make it a goal. Like, I'm going to do this, and this is how I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it, and this is it. And this is what I sat down to figure out the last two weeks. Even though in the back of my mind, I always had the intention that I would trade the market for this purpose. And I actually had the intention always that I would become a millionaire prior to even finding out about the market or that I could trade the market. But getting back to the self-made status, this is where it's really at. Where you were going to take it upon yourself to create it for yourself. If you are willing to do that, you could be at any income level or in any career right now and with any amount of money that you have and make it happen for yourself. I truly believe this, and this is it. Of all the qualities and things that just were listed in that article, the six things, this is the most important one, without a shadow of a doubt, because it is going to be up to you whether or not you make it happen for yourself in the market. Whether you make $100,000 a year in the market, $200,000 a year in the market, or a million dollars a year in the market, or ever become a millionaire doing anything in your chosen field or career, it is going to be based on you. You're going to create it yourself. And actually, the least amount of money you have or the most amount of money you have, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have to create it for yourself. Because even if you have a career right now that pays over six figures a year, like the article talked about, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get there Faster than someone that's making 40 grand a year, someone that's making 40 grand a year has more of these self-made tendencies, meaning that they are taking on the responsibility of creating it for themselves by doing something to create it, okay, which you, which you have to do. Now, how are you going to create it? The U.S. stock market. The U.S. stock market is one of the most volatile markets of any of the markets in any country, and that's why everyone wants to trade it. People in other countries constantly come to me and want to trade the market. 
people all over the place want to trade the U.S. stock market. It's a great market to trade. There's so many stocks that trade on the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange every day. You can trade ETFs. You can trade companies. People have a lot of emotional investments in companies in the U.S. stock market, and it has momentum, volatility, and volume. Which and, and it's something that you can be anywhere in the world and trade it if you have an internet access and a brokerage trading account. So it's accessible to anyone, which makes it great as well. And it's really not that complex to understand how to trade it. Now, finding something that you can do that makes money in a strategy is a different story. But as far as actually learning how to press the buttons to take a trade and, and get set up with a broker, you could do it in 48 hours. You literally, you learn how to press the buttons and open up an account. It doesn't take that long of a time. So millionaire opportunities do exist in the U.S. market. And I clipped a chart here of the SPY because the SPY had a huge rally today. I knew the market would hold today bullishly. It did. And there's an enormous opportunity that's available right now in, in the U.S. stock market because this is a buying point for the market. I don't want to get too off topic here in the lecture today. But since for the people that came, I will tell you that this market is going to continue to rally in 2015 and is going to last longer than I even saw at the end of last year that this rally would last. This is a buying opportunity for people, and if you're in longer-term investments in strong stocks, it's huge potential. And so even right now, just looking at the market today, I see the opportunity to make millions of dollars in the market because this is a new level for that the market has made today that will continue, that is going to continue higher, okay, bullishly. Now, I have developed one specific strategy that I'm going to talk about today, which is gaps. I termed my strategy Golden Gaps. This one specific strategy has an unlimited amount of potential in the market, not just for day trading, but even overnights. It can be used bullishly and bearishly, although I will tell you, I prefer to short. And the thing is that I've read the market, this, this market right here, this clip of the spy, I've read this well and call this accurately for the last several years that I've been trading since I've had the business and really the last 12 to 16 months, I've called it extremely accurately. And, and, and it's because I know how to trade my system in gaps. And I've called the market long, even though I like to short. Okay, So gaps can be used for both bullish and bearish. I want to point that out. And if you've never shorted before, I find that shorting is great because short moves tend to happen very quickly. But I will say that there's just as much potential to the upside as there is to the downside in stocks if you're in the right pick. It is all about the correct pick in the directional bias. If you go long something and it falls, you're going to lose money. If you short something that rallies, aka people that are short of the market, you're going to lose money. People are short of this market. It made a series here of lower highs and lower lows. We haven't even gotten over that. And people are going to be blown through that in their shorts. People that have taken options short the market that think the market's going to crash. It is not setting up to do anything even remotely like that. And so people that have shorted this market are going to lose. You have to be in the right direction and you have to have the right pick. Okay? The pick for the potential. And when I say potential, I mean potential on the live day for me as a day trader, but also potential in the longer term if you want to do something over the bigger picture for longer term investing, which I did point out in that article too. Doing overnights for longer term investing, holding things for longer. Again, same thing has more potential to create more wealth. It's about the how, what, and the when. How do you make money in the market? You trade a strategy that's profitable, and golden gaps are a highly profitable strategy because they create large momentum to trade. The momentum is created in the gap, which we're going to talk about in a minute. What do you trade? Stocks, that gap, and rate 20 points or more per the golden gap 26-point rating system, and you trade the gap in the direction of the gap. The rating system has to be 20 points or more. I didn't take a trade today. I did call the market long in the morning. Now I didn't go long, and I was looking for a nice short. I rated my gaps this morning. I rated five things. Nothing rated 20 points or more, and do you know what? None of them worked, and I'm so glad I didn't trade today. I have a system for a reason. You follow it, okay? When do you trade them? Early in the morning on the open when they set and trigger up as day trades, and the day they gap as long as the longer-term trade, you can take it for a longer term, which we'll talk about as well. And HPQ is one of these. This is a gapped here. You could have shorted it. And for the longer term, this is still in play. Longer, meaning you're holding the trade to a larger target. Okay? So it's one strategy that you use to get there used in many ways. Day trading, you have the money live on the day, and then in the longer term. Okay? You get more leverage or buying power when you're in it and flat by the end of the day. Now, someone emailed me earlier today, and if anyone has any specific questions about this too, we can talk about it at the end, about shorting. 
you know, every broker should give you leverage to short or go long. It's no different. It's absolutely no different. They should give you leverage if, you, if you're taking the day train and the leverage will be more than overnight. Whether you go short or long, you still have the leverage. And if you're getting a song and dance story from the broker, then you need to investigate other brokers. There's millions out there, okay? And uh, it's, it's accessible to anyone to be able to short. There's different types of accounts that you can set up. But you will get leverage if you're, as long as you're flat by the end of the day at 4 o'clock. And even people that are holding overnights get 2 to 1 leverage. It's about focusing on one strategy, which equals a consistency. And you absolutely have to be consistent if you want to get to the point where you're making a million dollars a year as a day trader or a long-term investor. Most people jump around in their trading and investing using different strategies and then find limited or no success. To achieve this kind of income in the market, you need to focus. Focus, 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 focus. Focus on exactly what you're doing. And remember the quote I said earlier about starting from where you're at, okay? Then all of a sudden, everything in the world seems possible. But you have to start where you're at right now with whatever amount of money that you have. One quality strategy is all you need to pay yourself on a high level, and not only that, on a regular basis. Knowing a strategy you can replicate over and over for profits can change your trading world. And having one powerful strategy that pays you will open up your eyes to the true profit potential in the market, which, by the way, is for the idea of making millions of dollars, which I always knew. The market can offer you a real lifelong career and wealth if you have a strategy that makes money consistently. Golden gaps are a strategy that can generate the kind of money in the market that most people only dream of. Because most people only dream of becoming millionaires. Most people will never become millionaires. They dream about it, but will never know how to make it happen or even attempt to make it happen. Again, going back to the self-made, you have to have a strategic plan to do it, and then you have to implement that plan as well. Now, why are gaps so powerful? And how can trading gaps put you on the road to becoming a millionaire? because gaps are made by large institutional money. That's one of the reasons they're so powerful. That's why the market's getting bought. The market is higher because it's getting bought by institutions, by banks, by hedge funds. That's why the idea of shorting this market is insane. And I've been saying that for like the last six months, okay? Gaps are made by institutional money. And you've, but you've still got to pick a way to correctly play it, like the market gap down today. And if you shorted that, you lost. And it rallied huge. Not every gap down is a short. Not every gap up is a long. And people that play like that lose. You will not make money like that. Why do you think it took me three years to create a 26-point rating system, which I'm going to talk about more later, to figure out if I'm supposed to short a gap down in the market today or buy it? Because you can't just short every gap down, and you can't buy every gap down. And you can short every gap up, and you can't buy every gap up. There is a formula. You have to qualify the gap. They're not all the same. Once you rate it and you qualify it, you get the confirmation and then you get the conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and you play it. And if it's not and it doesn't rate over 20 points, then you don't play it. Then you don't do it. Then you don't trade. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. And I, even, I have been trading for seven years. I've been trading gaps for seven years. And I cannot tell you how excited, how excited I was when I saw the market today. I can't, I, words cannot express how excited I am, how well I'm calling this market. It's all because I know how to trade gaps. And even me, myself, I'm realizing how powerful it is. All of a sudden, everything is opening up to me. And I'll be honest with you and tell you, not only do I realize that I'm, I can be, have the potential to become a millionaire doing this, I can become a billionaire doing this because I know how to do it. I know how to do it. It's just about taking the next step, which I'm going to talk about through this. But it is incredibly powerful. And for many, many people, this idea of taking the next step, people can't do it, but you got to do it or you won't get there. But you got to take the first step first, and then you take the second step next, and that's how you do it. But trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power and money. And that's how you make money. That's how you make small amounts, medium amounts, big amounts, and huge amounts. And of course, you can make huge amounts if you get it right because it's all about how much you're risking. And this is what we're going to talk about. Now, again, who makes gaps? The institutions. So this gap here, do you see? This gap rallied on the day here in the market and got bought. It literally, the low of the day was set in the market at 931. You could have bought the market at 932. It would have been very aggressive, and it was a huge trade today. And it ran. Huge trade. Now, HPQ, same thing. Rated the gap, rated more than 20 points in here. You shorted this gap. This gap, you would have shorted. You could have made money on this in the day, 
And where it came down here, it gapped down, it closed the night before at 38.50, gapped down here to 35 something, gapped down $3 overnight, and the stock has dropped and hit on through 31. So the stock here from the day of the gap, which was back on February 25th, never looked back from the entry price, and it's gone down here and dropped more than $4. Okay, and this is just in a swing trade. This isn't you have to sit at your desk every day, that you have to be monitoring it or day trading every day. This is a swing trade or an options trade or a core trade that you just take the trade in short and it never looked back from your entry price in this. Okay, you, you have to manage it watching it, but you don't have to sit and babysit it at your computer or the desk or even be in my live trading room every day to do this. Okay, now what is a golden gap? I've been talking about this, this is what I named my system. It really is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. It is called a golden gap because institutional traders and investors are making the gap. They are creating and making the gap. A golden gap, and this is what I determine, rates 20 points or more per the 26 point rating system. And that's it. And you have the system and you learn it and when you learn it you follow it and you don't deviate. And that's why I didn't trade anything today. In the case of a bullish golden gap, institutions are buying the stock, therefore the stock was higher in the day. It qualifies 20 points or more. In the case of a bearish golden gap, institutions are selling or shorting the stock, therefore the stock was lower on the trading day and you would take a short position in it. Also, the benefit of my system and learning it is if you're in a long, let's say you're in a long position, if the stock gaps down, you rate the gap as a bearish gap to determine if it's going to follow through. If it rates 20 points or more, you might want to sell in a long position. Do you understand? There's so many uses to understanding this because the rating system tells you not only when to take something, but if it gaps against you in a position that you're in, then you would know if you should exit it and take your profits in the train or, 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 or if, you, if the gap goes against you to actually exit it, okay? So, but I, me, I prefer the bearish gaps because gaps that gap down have two things in them to create the gap. Therefore, they have double potential to move because people are selling and shorting stuff that falls. And in stuff that is bullish, usually you have mostly just buying, okay? The point I'm trying to make, though, is that not all gaps are the same. Not all trades are the same. Not all gaps are the same. So you have to qualify them and pay the, play the quality ones so that you can make the money, so that you can get to the point where you are doing uh, a higher-end risk, okay, to make this kind of money, which we're going to talk about. But, again, you have to have the quality because even if you had, you know, a certain amount of money to trade, you still don't want to have big down days or too many down days. You still will have days where you take a loss. That happens to everyone. But I'm saying that you will have uh, honed in to pick the quality so that you don't have that many down days and that the quality of the pick allows you to risk more and have the confidence and the conviction to do it. One of the biggest things that I have found for myself now that I've been trading now for seven years, it's 2015. I started out in the end of 2008. I can't put a price even on my level of confidence right now. If, if I could bottle up my confidence and conviction and sell it to people, I'd be a billionaire. My confidence comes from my knowledge. So you got to get the confidence yourself because I can't bottle it up and sell it to you. But I can teach you the knowledge and that will give you the confidence and you will do it. And that's how you are getting to the point where you can know that you're making the right choice to take the risk in the trade aggressively with size, with risk, with it all. Okay. Quality versus quantity makes a big difference in your results. It's like going out and if you're dating someone in a a gentleman uh, buys me a beautiful uh, bracelet and one guy I date buys me a cubic zirconia and the other one buys me a beautiful, fabulous, real diamond necklace. Well, obviously there's a huge difference and I could wear them both, one on each arm and look at them and you could you really wouldn't even be able to compare them, okay? I want real diamonds, I want real diamonds in the market and I want to see the quality, quality pick of a trade that's going to go to the target and have a good risk to reward and a momentum move that's going to really pay me. You've got to put a plan of action in place. And my rating system is the plan of action that puts in place to find the pick. And then you take the risk that you're going to need to do it, which we're going to talk about here in the rest of the lecture. Now let's talk about the one that was here. This is after this day, and I just sat down after this day and said, I really got to look at this now. When I got in the morning and I looked at this, I knew that this would work. 
I knew it would work and I had everything figured out and the gap rated 20 points or more per my 26 point rating system. This was APOL, it was back on March 25th. The stock closed the night before I appeared at 28 something and opened the next morning down here around 23.50. So what do you do? You get up in the morning before 9.30, the market opens at 9.30 and you will rate the gap. And if the gap rates 20 points or more, put the 26 point rating system that I teach, then you will look to short the gap on the day. Now this was a gap down, not a gap up. Now, <clears throat> The dream target on this was $20. And you know what? I knew that it would get there. I knew that it would get there. I absolutely knew it. Now, I do teach targets in the class as well. I teach support, resistance, how to take the trades, and I teach the targets. But the dream target on this, on APOL, was $20. It actually, the low of the day in this was like 1978 or something. So it got to $20. Now, this trade was a beautiful morning move. It had a humongous move in it in the morning. But if you wanted to hold it down to the dream target, you did have to be in it all day. Getting back to the quality versus the quantity, in order to get to the point where you're making a certain amount of money a, a month to be able to make a million dollars a year as a trader, you need to trade not only with size, but you need to hold trades that are great gaps, that are working, that set up perfectly, that are perfect to the target. Okay, that is how you do it. And this is what I was working on in the last two weeks. Now, let's look at it. This was the first entry in APOL. The stock gap down, this is a one minute chart. You would short it right here. Stop was here. This is the first entry in it. You could have been in the stock here at 931 and you could have been in it until the close of the day. The entry price was you would have shorted the stock at 2339. The stop was big though for this. I will say that it was a bigger stop, okay? If you take the risk on this one and you take the risk, Say you take 4,000 shares, okay? You risk $2,040 in the trade, and you're in, you're in it, okay? You, this is a lot of a risk, okay? But you're, you're saying that if the trade stops out, you're actually going to be down 2,000 some dollars, okay? So if you take the trade and you risk $2,000, if you get stopped out, your account has to be willing to withstand the $2,000 risk, okay? Now, the exit on the trade, if you stayed in it all day, the dream target was $20, all right? If you stayed in this trade all day and shorted 4,000 shares of this, which isn't that big of a deal, okay? This isn't, a, this isn't like uh, 25,000 shares. You could have made $13,560, all right? Actually, I'm realizing this is 61 cents here. I just I just didn't have the addition right on the share size. 4,000 shares in this would have been $2,400 risk. It's a 61 cent risk here. I'm just realizing I didn't calculate this right. But just stay with me here. If you shorted 4,000 shares of this and stayed in it all day to $20, you would have made $13,000. You actually would have risked 2,400 though, not 2,000. Now let's go back and look at this. The stock was 61 cents. So you would have been in this here, shorting it. You would have put the stop here. You would have risked 2,400 bucks. Now, when I went back and I was looking at this, the risk amount in order to take your risk unit, and we're gonna talk about this in a little bit later too, that you need to risk per trade to make 80 to 100 grand a month is between 2,000 and 2,500 dollars a risk unit. The thing that I that I realized when I sat down to figure this out is that isn't that actually that crazy. Now I know that is a good amount of money. That is a good amount of money, but it's really not that crazy. Like it's totally doable. Now some of you may not have the accounts to do this yet, but I'm showing you this here because it, because it's doable. Initially, I guess when I got into trading, like I said, I wanted to make a lot of money, and then of course I went through the process. I was losing at the beginning. I created my system, and now I'm doing this for years. And I really haven't seriously sat down since just the last month to figure out what my risk really would need to be to make a million dollars in the market. And it's actually a lot less than I thought. If your risk unit is between $2,000 and $2,500 a risk unit, that's all you need. But you have to find the right picks. Okay, now let's get back to it. So if you had shorted this here with 4,000 shares and put the stop here and been in this all day, in this one trade here, you would have made over $13,000. Okay. This is, this is incorrect. It should be 2400 though, because the stop 61 cents. Share size is still the same, 4000 This is an enormous amount of money to make in one trade, but you could have done it in a stop. Okay? Great risk to reward. You would have been in it all day. 
You would have been in it at 9.31, almost into the open. I took this trade. Now, I didn't have 4,000 shares of it. I didn't risk $2,400 in this position. I did go back and look at how much I actually took of this one. I forgot. I actually did risk $1,500, though, in this trade. I did risk a lot for me in this trade. But if I had risked another 1,000, I mean, I could have had a, a larger day. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, let's go back to this one here. This was the second entry. I'm going to go and show you on the chart. After the first setup, you could have taken it again. You could have shorted this right in here at 2305 with 4,000 shares. Say you missed the first one. Risk was 2400, eggs is 20 at the target. You would have been in it all day. This trade, you would have made a little bit less because you would have been in this at a deeper price. You still would have made $12,200 in one trade. Risk to reward is 5.06. Now, the entry in this is here. You're still getting in the stock here by 935. This entry and this entry, the stock never even touched those numbers the rest of the day. If you shorted the stock at 2339 or shorted the stock at 2305, it never touched that price the rest of the day. And not only that, it's April 6th, it hasn't touched that price since ever since you took the trade here, if you even did it as an overnight trade. Now, you wouldn't have done it overnight with the size, though. All right. And I want to point out that these are actually big stops. A $0.60 cent stop in a $24 stock or $23 strike price stock is actually a big stop for me. But you take what you can get when you get the setup. And sometimes it's a small, small stop. Sometimes it's a medium stop. Sometimes it's a large stop. Okay. But again, 4,000 shares is doable here in a stock like this. Okay. And particularly even with the strike price because you take 4,000 times the cost of the stock. So if you have a stock, for example, and I'm just roughing it out, that costs $20, times 4,000 shares, that's 80,000 in buying power. Not 80,000 in cash, but 80,000 in buying power. We are going to talk about buying power at the end. But 4,000 shares is doable. The stock moved over $3 in the day, and you could have had over a $10,000 day, whether you made 13,000 or 12, depending on where you took it, the first entry or the second one, what your average price was. But you had to hold it. You had to have a size, get the entry, you had to have the pick, which I had, the entry I had, the size, and you had to hold it. Okay, see how it all comes together. This is where the knowledge helps you. Now, there was another one minute setup. I'm going to show, go back and show you this. If you missed the first setup, the second setup, or the, there was a third setup. 2230. I didn't take this one, I was already in it, but I did call it in the live trading room. This was the best uh, stop here for this for the morning. It was only 30 cents. If you shorted 7,000 shares of this, which is a $2,100 risk, you could have made over $16,000 on the day in this. And this is a trade I called in the room. I was already in a stock up above this, around 23 something at the price. Risk to reward in this is over seven, and you could have made over $16,000. Now, you would have needed 7,000 shares, but again, this is actually doable. This is actually totally doable, okay? Now, is it doable for everyone in here based on the size of your account? No. But you have to learn how to trade first, and then you start making money, and then it's doable when you have the money after you start making money. You make money in the market, and then you increase your size over time once you learn what to do. But $2,100 is actually not that crazy. I'm sure half people in this room have lost more than that in a trade in the market, but not made $16,000. Think about it. Okay, here, let's go to the, here, I'll show you the trade. So here was the next one. This is the third one in the one minute. And again, I was already in this thing up here, but here was the third entry that I called in the room. Still great time of day here, 945. This was a really good stop, though. Now, you could have taken the one up here and lowered the stop down here. I didn't lower the stop, but you could have. I typically don't lower my stops, but you, but you could have. You could have just lowered the stop here and protected yourself, and you would have made money even if it stopped out and didn't keep going there. All right, let's go to the next one. There was a setup in the five-minute chart. You do not get this on every trade, but, you know, as it turns out, there was actually a five-minute on this as well. Not that far after the third one minute. This is around 10 o'clock, right in here. Again, I called this in the room. I didn't do it. I was already in it. You could have done this here right at 10 o'clock. The five-minute entry price was 21.84. The first trade, you're in it above 23. 
This setup again on the 5 minute at 2184. You see how getting the best entry really helps, which you've got to get the pick to do it, to get in it quick, which I do. Now the stop is 2220, but this even was good because the target was 20. Okay, the target was still almost $2 from here on the 5 minute, and the time of the day is good. 10.05 is early enough to take it. Mean the potential to go, you still have six more hours left in the day for it to drop to $20. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, 36 cents was the risk in this one. On 6,000 shares, this is a 21.60 risk. $2,160. Exit at $20, you would have made over 11,000. This is if you didn't take any of the one-minute trades, you missed them all, you fell asleep, you woke up late. You took the trade at 10.05, you still could have made $11,000 in this. How do you do it? You find the gap, you rate the gap, you got to find the target to know the potential was there for it to go to the target to even take a trade that's late because it is after 10 o'clock, but the stop was good. Another great trade that was 5R trade. Every trade in the stock on this day of the quality of the pick of the gap was over 3R trade. Every one, 5R, 6R, 7R, this, was, this is the point I'm trying to make here, which I'm going to talk about at the end. Now, it also had a 15-minute setup in here. Here's the bigger picture here and the longer term on the daily. Oh, I didn't put the 15-minute. Shoot. Hold on. No, I didn't put the 15-minute in there. I thought I did. I showed the daily again. Well, you can go and look at it. You can go and look at it. It's a 15-minute. I'm not going to be able to show in here. Sorry. I thought I had the 15-minute the in here. I don't. You can go look at the chart yourself, or we'll show it at the end. I'll bring it up. Anyway, so 15-minute had a setup here that happened at 1245, which is late. But the stock still had a dollar thirty-five potential to the target, which was twenty dollars, and it was basing, basing, basing. We'll bring up the fifteen minute at the end. I'm sorry, I didn't have it in here. Anyways, the stop on this was seventeen cents. If you shorted twelve thousand shares of this and risked two thousand dollars and held it to twenty dollars, you would have made over sixteen thousand dollars. So this is an eight R trade. If you traded the morning, now just listen to me. If you traded the morning and you got all out, you did the one minute chart. You took it where I took it immediately. You took it and you did it and you got in it immediately. You were up so much money that even if you had gotten all out, you took the morning trade, you, say you got all out at 10 o'clock. You got out into the first drop at 10 o'clock, you were up more than $2,000. You stay with the stock and watch it because you do believe and have 100% conviction it's going to the dream target of 20. You wait to see if you can get back in it. You could replay it. You, you risk the amount you made from the morning or a portion of it or not the whole thing or $2,000 of it. And if this fails, you're down two thousand, but you're already at more than that for the morning. Even if you got, if you got in at twenty, just listen to me. If you got in this at twenty, this is what I was working on for myself. If you got in at twenty three forty, approximately, and you got out of it into the first drop into the morning and made two dollars for the first drop, okay. Whether you risked a thousand, two thousand, but you got to risk between two thousand and twenty five hundred to make this kind of money. All right. So say you did it. You did the first trade in here, going back. The first trade here, you did this trade, you risked it, you had 4,000 shares, you risked $2,000, you got into the first drop, the stock moved two bucks. You got the first morning drop, it moved two bucks, you're up over eight grand. Then you watch it, okay? You watch it and you decide you want to do it on the 15 minute and you take it at 12.45 in the afternoon, you're out, you're out by 10, 10.05, into the $2 drop in the morning, let it reset up. You take $2,000 risk, you're up eight. Worst case scenario, you're up six in the day. You take 12,000 shares of this, you stay in it to 20, you make another $16,200. So you could have made eight from the morning, $2 drop on the first plate, and 60 in the afternoon. You actually could have made $24,000 in total on the day in this, okay? Does everyone understand what I'm saying here? So the bottom line is that the potential in this one trade, okay, this one here, this this is the daily chart here again of the APOL. And I'm sorry I didn't have the 15 minute in there. We can go look at it when we're done. It's it's not going to matter. You can look at it yourself. That's just the point I'm trying to make. The the actual amount in here of the daily chart that you could have made if you did the one minute and got out into the first drop in the morning with a $2,000 risk and made $8,000. You could have watched the stock for a second setup, whether it was in the five, which set up at 10.05 or the 15 minute, you would have risked a portion of the money that you made in the morning. You would have taken the second trade in the five or in the 15 minute, and you would have traded it down to the dream target at $20. You would have been in the stock all day, but if you did the one on the 15 minute, which was the actually the smallest stop, but the, but the five minute stop was good too at 30 some cents. 
you would have you could have made potentially and this is one stock on this one in day here from the initial risk of two thousand dollars from the morning from the very first trade uh, that's because that's what you really risked in the first trade the second trade you're risking the money that you made from this first trade that you could have actually made in the stock on the live day twenty four thousand dollars this is just doing two trades now all of the ones I showed you in here the examples are taking the one trade and holding it all the way down but I personally don't trade like that. I usually take the trade and I get out of half and then I hold the rest of the target. But if you took the whole position, got all out and reinvested it into this here, into the second trade, you actually could have made even more or you could have done ads, which I'm not going to talk about in depth in this lecture here because it's too advanced. But I'm just pointing out the potential for the fact that you could have made in this one trade on the day, risking $2,000. This is a trade that I did, and I did risk $1,500 actually, but I didn't hold it to $20. And this is what made me then go back and sit and relook at this. Is that on this live day, you could have made over 20 grand in this stock. And if you only have even four of those a month, which, which I get, then you're making over $80,000 a month. And that doesn't include anything else you do. You just can't have big losses the rest of the month. These are gaps that I get. And then you're making over a million dollars a year. And you know, when I sat down and looked at it, I was like, this is something that I, I need to do like immediately. Now let's look at this here <clears throat> for the swing trade. Now, I don't do overnights, but I put this in here because a lot of people like to do them. If you did the same trade as me, took the right entry, 23.39, you got in it right away. This risk is off here. The risk was 60 cents. It wasn't 51, though. Either way, you take a 60 cent risk. Let's say you take uh, 500 shares. You risk 300 some bucks. Target is $16 for the swing trade in APOL. It's still in play. If you hold this to the full on target at 16, it's still in play. It's at 17 something today. You're less than $2 from it. You're, you're almost there, you're less than $2 from it, you're there. You would make $3,600. Now you have to be in this for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, okay, however long it takes. But this went today down to $1,770 something. Okay, this is a swing trade. So does anyone have any questions about APOL before I talk about the next thing in here? It's the, just write it in the room if you do. This is about the dream target. You've got to hold a position to the dream target or retake it for a second setup. You either hold half the position to the dream target, the whole position to the dream target, or you take a second setup in the trade to get the move to get this kind of money. It makes a massive difference in your month. If you don't know how to qualify gaps correctly, you won't know which ones are the good ones to hold it. You won't, you won't know. You won't, you won't know the ones that go to the target or don't go to the target. Once a trader is experienced with the system, you can learn to do ads to the original position. You could have done ads in this trade, or you take it all out and you retake the whole second trade. But doing ads helps you make more money. It will also help you get good at holding to bigger targets. And also, once a trader becomes experienced, you can start to trade with size. And actually, 4,000 share position is not that crazy. I mean, it's just not that crazy at all, not even with this price point. And many of you probably have the buying power to take a position like that right now. Now, whether or not you have the account size that you could withstand to take a $2,000 risk is a different story because a lot of you are to be too scared to risk $2,000 or $1,000 in a trade because of the fact that you don't know and have the confidence and conviction in yourself that you're choosing the right thing. And this is what I was talking about earlier. You have to become self-made. If you become self-made, that means you're relying on yourself. That means you better have confidence and conviction in yourself to do it. It's ultimately versus size versus no size. If you have 5,000 shares of a stock and it drops a dollar and you're in it short, you make $5,000. And, and if you're at 5,000 shares and it drops $2, you can make $10,000. It's all about making more money after you learn the system. It's just easy to just add the size. You cannot trade with size until you learn how to trade. The most important thing is learning the system, understanding gaps, getting conviction, and then knowing how to do it. Once you know how to trade well, you just add size as you progress. Many people put the cart before the horse you must learn how to trade well first and then learn the system and then you trade with live money and you trade with size. You need size to get to the million dollar goal, but the knowledge is going to help you train with the size to get to the million dollar goal. Now this was another one that I absolutely knew without a shot of a doubt would work and was a good gap. And uh, this was another one that happened in the exact same month. There were actually four when I worked on this last two weeks that I could have done this with. This was, this was the second one here. I'm not going over all four today. And we're kind of running behind here. Uh, so I'm going to go through this quickly. 
you would have shorted this here. And this was one where it actually went to the target, which was $15 by 10 o'clock. Now, this does not always happen this way. Sometimes they do take a little bit longer to get to the bigger targets. But in the case of this, it fell off the planet. You literally shorted this here, and this thing went to that super-duper target that quickly. And this can happen. This can happen all day long in stocks. Okay, you just got to know where the number is to get out. The price of the entry was $16.15. On $0.15, cents, if you shorted 15,000 shares of this, it's a risk, again, you're looking for the larger risk in this to make the million dollars. 2,250 is the risk. It's got to be between two and 2,500. I figured that out. That is it. It's got to be that. Exit at the target is $15. Total profit is 17,250. This is a seven hour trade. It happened in 30 minutes. This I'm going to do this someday. I'm going to take a trade like this and I'm going to make this kind of money in less than 30 minutes. I'm going to do it. I am so going to do it. And let me tell you again, 15,000 shares isn't that much. Now, we're going to talk about the buying power. Approximate buying power needed is $242,250 approximately for VRA. Now, that does not mean that you need the cash. It means the buying power. That means if you have a retail account or a prop account, depending on where you trade, you have to ask them the leverage. Proprietary day trading firms give you more leverage than retail accounts. You have to call them and check, but they do. So you probably could have found a prop firm out there that would have given you a 20 to 1 leverage that you could have probably taken this position with 10 to 12 grand in the account and done it. And they would have, you would have had the leverage to do it. Now, a retail account is 4 to 1. But even that, if you take 242 divided by 4, that's still only 60 some grand. And this is where I realize I'm like, wait a minute. This is actually totally doable. You only would have needed $60,000 to take this trade in a retail account. A retail account and less than that in a prop account. You have to know that this is going to work, which I do. Okay. Do you consider volume during gaps? I'm not taking a position live on the day unless it has volume. Okay. If that's what you mean. Do I have other considerations about it? No, not really. Like, I'm not trading penny stocks. I'm not trading things that aren't worth anything. I'm not trading things that have 50,000 shares on the, on the daily chart. You know, like, I, you know, I just generally trade stocks that do have volume. It's just like I just generally do. They're not, they're not going to move or go anywhere if they don't have any volume. And I can't, I'm not going to get filled. So do you know what I mean? That's just like general. So I would say that in general, I look to trade stocks that move in the market that have volume. Yes, as a generalized term. So I look at it, but it's not like something that I like hone in on. It's like I'm not going to do it. Like I wouldn't even be looking at it, Okay. Just the moving averages I have up here in the, in the charts. I have them on all my charts. This is a 220 and this is the 8. Okay, I have very, very clean charts. And I trade very accurately. So for those of you that have like 20,000 things on there, take them off. Anyways, let's get back to the buying part because that's some questions from the last webinar. You don't need a dollar for dollar cost of stock if you trade with a broker that gives you the leverage. If you day trade or take overnight trades, you will receive access to leverage. For example, if you have a retail day trading account with 25,000, you may have buying power leverage on the live day of 100,000 buying power. That doesn't mean you need 100,000 in cash. Does, this, does everyone understand this? I mean, I just assume that people know some of this stuff, but I'm going over it so you do. And if you don't understand it in depth here, ask me questions or email me, okay? But the idea is that you get the buying power, the leverage from, from the broker. I'm actually going to skip through some of this here because we're running out of time. But how much are you going to risk per trade to make a million a year? On average, $2,000 to $2,500 per trade is suggested. I, I, was, I, I, I was like astonished that this was all I needed to risk. I actually thought I was going to have to risk more, but I don't. And now that I realize this, and it's because because it's because of what I know. You know, when I started started out, when I when I started out, I just I didn't know what I know. What I know now, now this is I know what I need. So twenty thousand dollars a week equals eighty grand a month, and that's a million dollars a year. And you can make twenty thousand dollars a month in one or two trades. Okay. And we're getting into earnings season here this week. Earnings season starts in two days, and in earnings season will be tons and tons and tons of gaps. People ask me how many gaps I get, usually three to five in earnings season a day or more. And in non-earnings season, it's three to five a week. This is a multi-purpose system that has huge potential for you to increase your wealth by using one system in the market. It's one system to increase your wealth. Now, how do I do it? The rating system. The rating system, which gives me the confidence to make the picks. Because it tells me it's going to work if it rates 20 points or more. Does that mean that everyone works? No, sometimes I take a loss, but I don't lose that much. 
And because I'm trading so specifically, if I take one loss, it's not that big of a deal. I never take four losses. I don't even take four trades in a day. And if you're risking $2,500 a trade, you wouldn't either, okay? But it's about the quality. The 26-point rating season, a system tells you it's a high probability. High probability means you take the risk because you want to make the money. A high probability of directional bias for the entire day, big move on the day, and early confirmation. Now, whether you hold it into the dream target past 10, this isn't about the confirmation. You're getting the confirmation in that first 30 minutes. You understand? Because sometimes the stock will take longer to go to the dream target. If you've got to be out in the morning, you have to get going and be out in the morning, that's fine. You can take a second train, or you take out of half of it, or you lower the stop, or you hold it on down, or if you have to go, you take it out. But the thing is that you're looking for that confirmation. It's the precise entries of follow-through and a good risk-reward, which all of these had. So I teach a class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. The best thing about this class is a rating system which tells you what stock to trade. And this is how I'm calling the market. And this is how I'm knowing that stocks like I call in the morning, like the day that I called APOL. I said, don't even look at anything else. I'm not even looking at anything else. I said, I have 100% conviction. We're not even looking at anything else. People were putting ideas in the room. I said, why are you even looking at anything else? And that thing went to the dream target. That thing went to the dream target. Every time I say in the room, this is it. This is the one. NCOF, no chance of failure. We're doing it. And we get at least four of these a month in my room. Even in non earning season, we get them. They're there. And I realize this. And I, I guess I used to, I was so pre-programmed from years ago from starting out. Now I know so much that I'm, I, this, this amount of risk is totally doable. And this is doable. Okay, the amount of money that you need is doable too. And if you don't have it right now, I'm telling you, if you learn how to trade, you'll get to that point. Or someone will lend you the money to get to that point. Or you'll go work for someone who will give you the money to get to that point. Okay? But you got to learn how to trade. You have to learn how to trade. You have to learn how to find them to pick them to do it the way that I know it, which is getting the confidence and the conviction to do it and then to slap on the risk and do it. And I did risk $1,500 in that trade and that APOL. And I forgot what I risked because I just was I just slapped that sucker on to get filled. And I, I wish that I would have held it. I wish I would have held it to 20 Anyways, the rating system tells you what to look for. So empower yourself today if you want to learn my method. It's about becoming self-made. I'm I'm self-made. I'm a self-made woman. I'm a single individual self-made woman in the United States of America living in New York City. And I'm telling you, if I can learn to trade out of the market, then you can too. And I'm teaching people how to do it. I'm a self-made woman. And that is where it's at. And that is where you get the confidence and the conviction to do it. Confidence is a necessity. You have to have it to trade. This is one of these industries where if you are not confident in your own abilities to trade, you won't make it. You will lose. Because people are in the market like me that are taking people's money. And you know that when I make money on the day, I'm taking somebody's money. I am shorting stuff that people are buying. They're saying, well, the gap's going to fill the gap, and they're buying it, and I am shorting it. Like in that BRA, that BRA where it had that big rally, and I shorted it. So the thing is that you have to be confident to take the risk, to take the size, to trade it all, to make money. You must be confident. Even if you want to make $100 a day, which is $500 a week, which is two grand a month, you have to even be confident to do that. You won't make any money in the market at all if you're not confident. In fact, you will lose because someone like me is going to come in and take your money. And I'm telling you right now, if you are trading and risking your money in the market and don't have a strategy and don't have confidence in yourself, then stop because you're just throwing money down the toilet. And I hate to see people do that. Stop what you're doing, reevaluate, pull it on back, and regroup. You have plenty of time to do that. If you are losing money in the market, stop. Figure out what you're doing wrong or learn from someone like me because there are people like me that are in the market that are taking people's money every day that don't know what to do, that have no confidence. And when you're up against someone like me in the market or you're up against someone like me in a trade and I'm going after my gaps at 931 and shorting these things and I know that they're going to work. That's how you're losing if you're doing it wrong. If you think the gap's going to work or you think it's a buy or you don't understand what to do, it's the same thing with people shorting this market. You've got to be confident and I can help you. I can build you up. I teach you the knowledge to do it. I motivate you to do it by buying golly, you have to have it. And you have to have it if you want to make millions of dollars, too. I mean, you have to know that you can do it. Okay? So I teach a class. A class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a complete system to use to trade the market. I teach the class. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free. The class is online. The class is this weekend, April 11th and 12th from 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $34.99. Don't wait to secure your spot because I'm running a special, and I'm just going to flip through this really quickly. I'm running a special for this 
week for this class. I was running it through Easter. I've extended it now because i got too many people that are interested that couldn't do it because of the holiday by yesterday. If you want to sign up for this class by April 10th, and don't wait because I'm going to get a lot of people for this one because it's a great deal. You get five months free in the room. You get the Wealth Manifestation class for free. This is a savings of $1,649. You get the room free to Labor Day. To be in the room to get my calls like the APOL, if this expires Friday, no exceptions, no exceptions past the date, and I know I'm going to have a lot of people, and I only take a certain number of people for the class. So if you want to do it, sign up and email me for the paperwork. This is a great class that I'm going to be giving for free with the April course. It's a training psychology class. And I also teach one more class if you're interested. It's called the Trends Course. This is a separate date. This is $999 on April 29th and 30th from 12 to 4. This is about long-term trends in stock charts if you're an overnight trader and want to do it. And if you want to do both the GAP class and the Trends class this month, you can save $500. And if you sign up for the special by Friday, you will actually will save over $2,000. You get five months free in the room, the Trends class, the Wealth class, and you will get the Golden Gap class. And then you'd have everything you need to be able to trade. It would be, this is $39.99. Anyways, I, I, I'm just ran right out of time here. I trade the New York and the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Thank you for saying you love my enthusiasm. If you have any other questions here, you can email me. Wagar, I know you're asking me stuff. And we're right up at the time here. I don't want to go too over. Email me. Email me and Melissa at thestockswish.com. Any specific questions? Or if you'd like to sign up for this special offer, or if you want to trial to the room. I give a one-week trial to the room. You can email me if you want to trial to the room this week. There's some nice, nice earnings out Wednesday and Thursday of this week as some things I like. We may get a good one. We may get another APOL this week. I'm seeing some charts that I have a feeling that are going to play out for in my favor. Thanks so much for coming. Hope I didn't talk too fast. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Email me if you need anything. Thank you.